really good when you can sit down with some of the folks who have been there since the inception and listen to some of the stories that they tell you. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, our party is a party that is all about service to the people of Nevis. All about looking out for the people of Nevis. And we are a godly party. So, before we get going with any of our meetings, before we get going with any of our meetings, we like to call upon the Lord to bless the proceedings. Let me, let me pray first. Okay? okay. <laughs> let us all bow our, our heads and close our eyes as we invite the Lord's blessing upon the proceedings tonight. Gracious God, creator of everything that was made, everything that we do, we do to your name, honor, and glory. Be with this meeting tonight. Be with those who are on their way. Give them traveling mercies as they get there. Let them get here safely tonight, dear Lord. And let every word that proceeds tonight be words that you would be proud of. Let everything that is done tonight be an, an, an admonition and a blessing to all those who are within the sound of our voice, all those who are watching via social media, all those who are listening via various media, dear Lord. May it be a blessing to everybody, and may everything that is done be done in your Son's name, Jesus Christ, our oh Lord. Amen. Come Zimba, change the color of the tape. We're not going any further with this green tape. Sorry. Much better. We had to cover that green tape. Because it's going to be a blue affair come Thursday, ladies and gentlemen. You know, we are being presented here. In Nevis and here in the parish of St. Thomas's, you, the people of the great parish of St. Thomas's, have an opportunity that not many have had before. You see, you get a chance at a do over. In December 2017, we had an election in Nevis to determine who will be the Nevis Island administration. At that time, four parishes in the island of Nevis said, we believe that the Concerned Citizens Movement is the best government for the people of Nevis. So four of our CCM candidates were returned and are now in government. We had one candidate who was not successful. The Honorable Joseph Parry, who had carried the St. Thomas's seat for many years, carried the seat. The Honorable Joseph Parry has said that he has done his day in politics. He has done his day of public service. And so he has deci decided to hang up his boots and to retire. So that has presented us with an opportunity. It has presented the people of St. Thomas's with an opportunity because now you already know the school. You already know what the outcome of the election is. And you now have been given an opportunity for a do-over. So people of St. Thomas's, you're getting an opportunity to do the right thing. And so we are coming to you this evening to beseech you and to ask you to do exactly that, the right thing. And in this election, the right thing is very simple. 
we have brought before you the right man, the man for the moment, ladies and gentlemen. He is a man who you know. We all know him. Indeed, the whole of Nevis knows the man. We are bringing before you the right choice. And the right choice is Keith Scarborough, MBE. We all know him as King This and That. And he's the right choice. You see, ladies and gentlemen, because in this election, you have an opportunity to do one of two things. You can either send a representative to the House of Assembly in opposition, where the only thing that representative will be able to do is to come to the House of Assembly every now and again when we have House of Assembly and talk in opposition. And on the flip side of that, the second thing that you have the opportunity to do is to send somebody to the government. Send somebody who will sit in the House of Assembly on the government side. And that person, Keith Scarborough, will not only sit in the House of Assembly on the government side, but he will sit in that vacant chair in cabinet. The Premier has said it on the mic before, that he has that vacant seat waiting for Keith. It rhyme and all. We have the vacant seat waiting for Keith. And that is the other thing that you can do in this election. So a vote for NRP in this election means that you're voting for somebody just to go into opposition. You already know what the outcome is. Friday morning, regardless to the result, the CCM will still be the government here on Nevis. But Friday morning, after you have done the right thing and you have voted for Keith Scarborough, Keith Scarborough will be a member of the cabinet, a full-fledged member of the cabinet with all the rights and privileges and with the opportunity to advocate on behalf of the people of St. Thomas's, he will be there to represent for all of your needs in St. Thomas's. How much more do you think he can do sitting in government? So ladies and gentlemen, I believe that this is a very, very simple choice. You see, when you look at the two parties, you look at the CCM and you look at the NRP, there are completely different philosophies. And over the years, there has been no doubt which one of these two parties has the best interest of the people of Nevis at heart. When you look at the CCM in the things that we do, we are a party that put the people of Nevis first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. The people of Nevis mean everything to us. Our mantra over the past few years have been, people matter more, and then people matter most. And it continues to be that people matter most to us. When you look at the NRP, they have a track record. And their track record has been all of self and none of thee. Over the past few months, after being rejected time and time again by most of the people of Nevis, you have seen a few new faces around the NRP. But make no mistake about it, there's nothing new about the NRP. It's the same old boss of Mango and the same old Bonnop King. You understand? Same old NRP. A few new faces. But when you look at them and they're taking pictures, look in the background. It's the same people you see behind there. You know what they're doing? Cooping and waiting. They want to get back in. To do what? To represent who? 
when they are in, they don't represent anybody but themselves. So they are coming to you to say, give them the opportunity to go into government to represent who? Themselves. When the CCM come to you, we come to say, give us the opportunity to do good for you, the people of Nevis. So the choice, ladies and gentlemen, in this election is a clear choice. Keith Scarborough, MBE, King this and that, all the way. There is no comparison. There is no viable alternative in this election. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a very good meeting tonight. I've been off the mic for a little while. If you hear my voice cracking a little bit, it's because it's just getting back together. But take it easy. We're warming up as the meeting progresses. It's going to really, really pick up tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get going with our speakers. And you know... One of the lovely things about being in this spot, that we are straddling the border of two constituencies. Over here we're in Charlestown, on the other side we are in St. Thomas's. And so, we already have a representative for the Charlestown side. And we are asking you to give us the representative for the St. Thomas's side. So we're going to have two representatives advocating for this area. How, how good would that be? Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want you to take my word for it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring on the first speaker for tonight. And he is the man who has been doing wonders in this area. When you drive down from the top of Craddock Road now, you're coming down on smooth roads. There are some little small roads in the Craddock Road area. And so every time I go through a road in Craddock Road, the road do. I drive through another road. It's a dirt road. I come back a couple months after. The road is brand spanking new. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring to the mic the man who has been responsible for all of this change. The representative for St. Paul's, none other than the Honorable Spencer Brand. Good night, good night, good night, good night, good night, quad a quad. And the sound system here tonight is crisp. Good night, buenas noches to my Spanish friends here in quad a quad. It is good to be here in the heart of quad a quad, the border between St. Paul's and St. Thomas's. I want to start by congratulating Zimba for the nice sound we are having tonight. You know, when you have a nice sound system, it takes a lot of pressure off of the voice. And I want to say thanks and congratulations to Zimba because he has been on his A game for the past few meetings that we have had throughout this by-election. Now, ladies and gentlemen of Code Code, those of you who are here on the St. Thomas's side, we are here tonight with a very simple message. We are here tonight to say to you that come Thursday, 
the 5th of March, there will be an election in one constituency on the island of Nevis. And that is the St. Thomas's constituency. Those of you who are living on the northern side of Quota Code, who are registered in St. Thomas's, you will be called upon on Thursday to go out in your numbers and vote. But we don't just want you to go and vote. We want you to go and vote for the hammer. We want you to go and vote for the blue team. We want you to go and vote for the CCM candidate, Keith Scarborough. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this by-election came about as a result of the retirement of the Honorable Joseph Parry. And as I've done throughout this meet, these various meetings, I want to take this opportunity to offer my thanks and congratulations to the Honorable Joseph Parry for his work in politics over the many decades. And I certainly want to wish him happy retirement. But ladies and gentlemen, this election is not about changing your CCM government. And those of you who are in this area would know that your CCM government have been a friend to you rather than the other side. We want you to stick with your CCM party and with your CCM government. This election, ladies and gentlemen, is a very simple one. It will be a choice whether you will have someone in opposition or whether you will have someone in government. And we are saying to you that your CCM party already have four elected members in government and in cabinet. Four constituencies already have four elected representatives to speak on their behalf. And we are saying to you, the good people of St. Thomas's, give yourselves the chance to have your elected representative in cabinet as well. And that person will be on the blue team. That person will be on the hammer team. That person will be Keith Scarborough when you go out to vote in your numbers on Thursday. Now I just want to say to you who normally vote in this area, normally you used to vote at the school of the Roman Catholic Hall. That location has changed. You will now be voting down at the Nipak Performing Arts Center. And I want you to remember that. I want you to remember that on Thursday, instead of going up the road to the Roman Catholic Hall, you will be going down to Nipak to cast your vote. Ladies and gentlemen, Keith Scarborough, the next representative of St. Thomas's, have outlined an ambitious agenda for St. Thomas's. And while he will only have approximately three years in the first instance, we believe that as a part of your CCM team, he will be able to accomplish those goals that he would have set for the constituency of St. Thomas's. He spoke about upgrading the sporting facilities. He spoke about sponsoring sporting teams. He spoke about trying to create more jobs within the constituency of St. Thomas's. He spoke about training. He spoke about ensuring that a number of roads that have been on the cards in St. Thomas's for some time get done. 
And we are asking you, ladies and gentlemen of St. Thomas's, to give yourselves that chance to have a representative that will speak on your behalf. Thursday, the 5th of March, I want you, the residents of St. Thomas's, to be a part of history. I want you to help create history on the island of Nevis by ensuring that after the votes are tallied, that you will ensure that you send an MBE to cabinet and to parliament. I want you to ensure that when the votes are tallied, that you will ensure that your CCM party will have all five seats on the island of Nevis. And that would mean, ladies and gentlemen, every single member in cabinet will be singing and will be speaking from the same hymn sheet. Give yourselves that opportunity. Give yourself someone in cabinet and in parliament that will have your listening ears. Allow him to be the champion of all the things that you want done in St. Thomas's. Turn a new page and ensure that you have an elected representative in government. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot stress this enough. I cannot stress this enough that after Thursday, there will be no change as it regards to who will be the government of Nevis. The other side seems to be creating a myth and an illusion that there is a possibility of change in the government. Absolute foolishness and absolute rubbish, ladies and gentlemen. The only thing that will change is the representative for St. Thomas's. And your CCM government still have three more years as the government of the island of Nevis. So we are asking you to strengthen the hand of your CCM government. Those of you who are here from other parts of the region, under the NRP, you would have been harassed. You would have been victimized. You would have been terrorized by the NRP. And we are saying to you that under your CCM government, there has never been that harassment and that terrorism terror of you as a resident in this country. We are saying to you, we welcome everyone to our shores. And once you abide by the laws and the practices of this, our beautiful island, you will have no problems. Once you respect the laws of this country, you will have no problems. Ladies and gentlemen, you will be more comfortable on the CCM government. You've always been more comfortable on the CCM government. You will be more comfortable with a representative in St. Thomas's under the CCM banner. You will be more happy and more comfortable with the hammer in this country. We're going to hammer them. Ladies and gentlemen, my task tonight is very simple. I want to encourage all of you who are here in St. Thomas's to go out on Thursday, the 5th of March. Go to Nipak Performing Arts Center. Go early and cast your vote for Keith Descendant Scarborough. Cast your vote for the Hammer. Cast your vote for CCM and ensure that you have representation in St. Thomas's. Representation that you can count on. Representation that will look out for your best interests and not for his own best interests. Ladies and gentlemen, some of you have known the exploits of this and that in Calypso. 
And I always like to tell this story. Because win, lose, or draw, Keith Scarborough keep coming back. That has been the hallmark of the man. And he has contested a number of elections in St. Thomas's. He has lost many. But I am appealing to you tonight to give him that victory on Thursday. Give him that victory on Thursday. Allow yourselves to have Keith Scarborough as your representative. Ladies and gentlemen, Thursday will be your time. Thursday will be an opportunity for you to allow yourselves to have a representative in St. Thomas's that will be in cabinet. And that is important. That is extremely important. Because it's when you have a representative in cabinet, that is when you will have a greater voice in cabinet. That is when your representative will be able to hit the table and say, I want this for my constituency. And while this, the pie is small, while the pie is small, once you give yourselves that extra voice in cabinet, you will get some action and some activity in St. Thomas's. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, I appeal to you. I beseech you. I encourage you to go out on Thursday and cast your vote for the hammer. Cast your vote for your CCM party in government. Cast your vote for King Keith Descendant Scarborough and send him to parliament, send him to cabinet. Thank you, good night, and God bless. Thank you very much, Honorable Spencer Brand. And I think you brought a very good message tonight. We know we have a community living in the area. Good folks from the DR. And you know, I remember the days when the NRP was in government. And they had people driving around in school buses and so on. You know, we got to remember who we are dealing with. And since the CCM has been in government, we don't have any more of those things happening. Because we believe that we are all one people. And we have to look out for our people. And that means each and every one of us. It don't mean simply because you weren't born in Quaddock Road or in Barnsgut or in Jessup's that you are not one of us. You see, a lot of times we have a lot of Nivision family and friends who have migrated overseas and they expect to be treated kindly when they are there, and we want them to be treated kindly while they are there. And every now and again, we get to go and visit them. And they have been able to make life in other people's lands. So what happens if people come and make a life in Nevis? There's nothing wrong with it, ladies and gentlemen. That is what being a good comrade 
a good Caribbean people, good black people. That is what it's all about. And so I thought that was a very, very valid point from a man who has been doing a lot of work in this general area. The most of the Craddock Road is a smooth road already. And we see the project coming down to this area in another few months. The entire project is going to be finished. And when you drive on Craddock Road, you're going to feel as though you're somewhere in New York. Or, well, not New York. In Florida or somewhere where they got smooth highway and so on. No, not New York. <laughs> And that's the man, Spencer Brand, who is doing all of that work. And ladies and gentlemen, if you send Keith Scarborough to government, he's going to do a lot of work, you know, because he's a man with a lot of talent. Every night, most people in Nevis, they turn on the TV now, TV go on and NNC. And you just take it for granted that things like NNC have always been around. But they have not always been around. I am old enough to remember that once per week, we used to watch the week gone by. Once per week, it took somebody with, you know, some gumption. Somebody with the, the, the tenacity to say, Let's do something different. Let's do something better. We can do more than that. It took a man like Keith Scarborough to say, hey, let's bring some local things on TV every night. So Keith Scarborough has been doing things for a long time in Nevis. And we've heard him night after night as he comes to the podium and he speaks that he's telling you about the things that he's going to do. And you know what? I believe him because he's a man of his word. He has done a lot in the past. Imagine now if you give him the opportunity to be a representative, the kind of things that he's going to be able to do. Not just for the parish of St. Thomas's, but for the benefit of all divisions. So ladies and gentlemen, we move forward with the meeting. And I'm going to bring to the mic no less than the man himself, the man who is putting himself up for election, the man who the great concerned citizens movement party has put our confidence in to be the next representative for the parish of St. Thomas's. Please welcome to the mic, soon to be Honorable Keith Scarborough. Good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening to all of you who would have traveled here from far and near to be with us this evening. A special good evening to the good people of St. Thomas's Parish. And more particularly, the good people on the northern side of Quadra Road. We choose to come here this evening in this particular spot because this is where this used to be the headquarters of the campaign of the Nevis Reformation Party of all of the public political parties. When I was a young boy, I remember Pam coming across from St. Kitts. I remember Labour coming across from St. Kitts. I remember Eugene Walwyn 
coming across here from Bath Village right here to the base because the base was where all the happening was in terms of politics. So I am happy that I am able to be here this evening because as a little boy I was walking up and down the street right here listening to various politicians making the case. So I am proud this evening to be standing here many years later to make that same case to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have turned the corner going home to March 5th. We have campaigned over the past couple of weeks in the different villages of St. Thomas's Parish. We have done the legwork throughout the constituency. Only this afternoon, we spent over two hours in the Cahoon housing development. And I can say to you that the message is resonating. It is resonating throughout the constituency. So much so that we are witnessing the Nevis Reformation Party probably for the first time in 40 years going full speed only this afternoon to Quadro Road. And that is because, ladies and gentlemen, they too understand the seriousness of the message. And what is that message, ladies and gentlemen, of the northern side of Quadricode and St. Thomas is on a whole? The message is a very simple one. It is a message that says you have a choice, a very simple choice to make. And even the supporters of the Nevis Reformation Party understands that that message only have one direction. While you have two choices, the message really goes one way. And what I mean by that is this. The two choices are you vote to send someone on the opposition benches or you vote to send someone into government. And the reason I say that it goes one way, it is because anybody who votes in an election votes for their representative to be in a position to assist them. That is why you go to the polls to vote for people or a party. You're hoping that your party win. You're hoping that the person for you, the person that you vote for wins. Because you know, if that person wins and go into government, your concerns will be addressed. But here you have a choice. You have a choice, like I said earlier, of one going into government and one going into opposition. And the Nevis Reformation Party are well aware. They are well aware that the message is lopsided. That the message that they are putting forth doesn't work for anybody. Because if the shoe was on the other foot, ladies and gentlemen of St. Thomas's Parish, just imagine the shoe was on the other foot where the Nevis Reformation Party had four seats. Just imagine they had four seats and they were campaigning to replace somebody on the CCM bench. 
You know what the message would have been? We in power already. Nobody on the opposition bench could help you. That would have been their message. And it would have been a right message. Because nobody on the opposition benches could help you. That is why they are so fearful in these elections. Because they recognize that the message that we are carrying to the good people of St. Thomas's parish is a true message, a positive message. And they have no answer to the message that we are bringing to the people of St. Thomas's. They have no answer. On Saturday evening, there was their launch. And all they said to the people of St. Thomas's Parish is let's keep it green. On their second launch, let's keep it green. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the Concerned Citizens Movement have four seats in government. So there's nothing to cope to keep green with a 4-1. You're keeping it brown. Not green. But luckily, fortunately, for the good people of St. Thomas's Parish, the Concerned Citizens Movement is a government that looks after all of the people of Nevis. And we have demonstrated that already in St. Thomas's Parish. We have demonstrated that over and over and over again with the Cahoon Housing Development, with the two international banks, with the best piece of road from Cotton Long to Cliff Dwellers. Ladies and gentlemen, I have said elsewhere that St. Thomas's Parish has benefited tremendously under the leadership of the Concerned Citizens Movement Administration. Even though they have never supported us in an election to the point that we would have won that seat. So now, now that it's 4-1, in favor of CCM. Now that they have an opportunity to get their representative inside of cabinet, the Nevis Reformation Party recognizes that the message that we are bringing to the good people of St. Thomas's parish is a solid message, a right message, a true message. And so we are beginning to see the panic button being pressed by the Nevis Reformation Party. But that is their problem, not ours. Our intention is to give the good people of St. Thomas's Parish a representative on the inside. One to raise their concerns. One to help them develop further. And we are saying that the CCM-led Nevis Island administration is prepared to do everything they can to support my candidacy. Once I'm elected people of St. Thomas's Parish, my colleagues have said publicly and clearly that they will support the initiatives that I am proposing to bring forward to assist the good people of St. Thomas's Parish. And I have outlined them throughout the constituency. Every meeting we have held, I have outlined some of my plans. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen of Quarter Road, the northern side of Quarter Road. I will do it one more time because, of course, this is our last meeting in this particular area. So I want you to understand what some of my plans are. I've decided that I want to revive 
the sports and culture in the constituency of St. Thomas's Parish. Because once upon a time, it used to be the breadbasket for Nevis in terms of sports and culture. But sadly, we have seen the sports and culture in the St. Thomas's Parish reduced to almost nothing. In terms of sports, the only cricket team we have left in St. Thomas's Parish is the Cotton Ground Pioneers cricket team. The only basketball team we have left in St. Thomas's Parish is the CG Rebels from Cotton Ground. And the only football team we have left in St. Thomas's Parish is the Pioneers football team from Cotton Ground. So I am proposing, I have said that once elected, I will have a St. Thomas's United cricket team, a St. Thomas's United football team, and a St. Thomas's United basketball team. And the whole idea behind that, ladies and gentlemen of Quadrock Road, is to give the other villages an opportunity to become part and parcel of those teams that is based for now in Cotton Ground. And I say for now in Cotton Ground because once you will have developed your team in Jessops, your team in Northern Quadrock Road, your team in Barnsgott, and your team in Westbury, then we could have separate teams. But to start it, to start it, to ensure that the young people in St. Thomas's get back into sports, I've decided to unite the St. Thomas's, the Cotton Ground rather, football, cricket, and basketball team with each village feeling comfortable to join those teams for now. In addition to that, I have said that the entire constituency allowance that I am supposed to be getting will go towards the development of those 14 principles. All of it, $500 every month for the cricket team, the, cricket, the St. Thomas United cricket team, or cricket club, which I hope to make it into. $500 a month to the St. Thomas's United football team, and $500 a month to the St. Thomas's United, sorry, CG Rebels. Ladies and gentlemen, the whole idea behind that is to get our youngsters involved in sports once again. Involved in sports. Now that we have solved the crime situation, or let me put it this way, now that our crime situation is much better, now that persons can walk the street again freely, now that gang members are hugging one another, working with each other, now that we can open the stores, the restaurants and bars late in the night again, I believe it is time now to get our youths who once upon a time was caught up in crime to indulge and involve themselves in the sporting field once again. In the field of culture, again St. Thomas's Parish used to be the breadbasket. That is where you used to go to get your fifer your troops, and different cultural aspects. I am saying that I want to revive that. And I intend to work closely with the Nevis Cultural Development Foundation, whose responsibility it is to develop the cultural arts throughout the country, throughout the various villages. And we have three community centers in St. Thomas's Parish. I intend to utilize them 
to have the youngsters who are interesting, interested in blowing fife, in beating the kettle drum, in dancing masquerade, in joining a troupe, to get them all involved and bring back, bring back that cultural spirit that used to be so rich and alive in St. Thomas's parish. I have also said that I intend to adopt a primary school student in St. Thomas's, one that needs the assistance and contribute $500 per month to that child for one year. And I said for one year because I intend to go to a different student the next year and another student the following year and keep going as long as I am the representative. Ladies and gentlemen, I have spoken of the basketball courts in St. Thomas's Parish, in Jessupson, Cotton Long in particular, that I would like to see them be resurfaced and lighted with seatings. And my colleagues have given me the assurance that they are willing to support that initiative in short order. I have said that I want to develop the play field in cotton ground, put a pavilion on it, and turn it into the second major play field here in Nevis, so we could accommodate various cricketing tournaments and football as well. But first, we have to upgrade our grounds in St. Thomas's Parish throughout the island of Nevis, yes. But since I'm speaking towards St. Thomas's Parish, that is why I am speaking of the cotton ground playing field. In quarter Court, the northern side, I am speaking of a community center. I spoke of having a community center place in quarter Court, and I am told that the Honorable Spencer Brand has a similar idea. So together, we could sit down and work out the location and what's best for the good people of Quadricode. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the Concerned Citizens Movement Party is a team that works together. We work together. And we have a leader, probably one of the best leaders in the Federation, in the, the Caribbean, sorry, not Federation. We know he's right, he has the best in the Federation. One of the best leaders in the Caribbean who is there to guide us in the right direction, in the best possible way. And we are happy, very happy indeed, to have him as our leader at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, as we come to, come closer to the election on March 5th, I want to ask you for your support. I want to encourage you to go out on March 5th and vote wisely. Vote wisely. This time around, I think you have a golden opportunity to get your representative inside of cabinet. Because, ladies and gentlemen, if we lose this opportunity, if we lose this opportunity on March 5th, we could very well see ourselves, we the good people of St. Thomas's Parish, could very well see ourselves without a representative on the inside for a very long time to come. So I am telling you, I am, a, I am pleading with you, I am asking you to grab hold of this opportunity and ensure, ensure that this time wrong, your representative go into cabinet to serve you, the good people of St. Thomas's Parish, to look after your concerns, your needs. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen of St. Thomas's Parish, 
the northern side of Quadrick Road in particular, I have a good feeling. I have a good feeling about what is going to happen on the 5th of March. And I want you to have that same good feeling. You, the good people of the northern side of Quadrick Road, I want you to give your support wholeheartedly, overwhelmingly, on March 5th. And before I end, I want to say to you that normally you will vote in the Roman Catholic Church Hall just up the street. But for these elections, you're going to be voting at NIPAC, the Nevis Performing Arts Center. That is where you're going to be voting. I want to say to you as well that I recognize it may be a little distant away. So I have said to all under the sound of my voice that if you need to be transported to the Nevis Performing Arts Center on March 5th, please call me. The number is 662-1960. 662-1960. And I will arrange to have transportation take you there and back. Sp spread the word to your friends and your family that if they need to be taken to the polls here on the northern side of Quadrick Road, please feel free to call me and I will ensure that you're taken to the polls and back on March 5th. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, I want to ask you for your support and I want to ensure, I want to ensure that when Friday morning come, your representative is on the inside. Your representative is Keith Scarborough and your concerns, I can assure you, will be addressed when the time comes. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening to me this evening. Thank you, Keith Scarborough. Quite a crowd, we're asking you, send Keith Scarborough to the cabinet. The other alternative is no alternative at all. The other alternative is no good for you. Somebody going into the parliament every now and again, talk, and you know, <laughs> I'm not even going to go there because it doesn't make any sense to say too much because really and truly when you listen to them talking and you start to listen for some substance the substance is not there they talk and they say well this need improving that need changing this need doing but they have not offered any alternatives clearly they only come in looking for a job they're only looking to full a seat. And when they fully see it, and they're in opposition, what are they going to be able to do for you? And the answer to that question is nothing. Nothing. That is what they're going to be able to do for you. But when you vote for Keith Scarborough, he will be a member of the Navy Island administration and he will be able to advocate on your behalf and be able to do all of the things that you need to get done in the St. Thomas's parish. Ladies and gentlemen, we are moving on with the meeting. We have a lot of speakers. We have a packed night tonight. And I'm going to, you know, because the meeting is going fast, go straight to our next speaker. Our next speaker is a very dynamic person.
Somebody who has been working hard for the people of Nevis. Somebody who exemplifies representation. And this is what we are talking about in this campaign. Represent representation. Ladies and gentlemen, help me to welcome to the mic the deputy leader of the Concerned Citizens Movement, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers. but we are more concerned with the northern side of Craddock Road. So I want to say good night to all of the folks down at Old Hospital Road, Upper Craddock Road and beyond. I believe this is sounding so good. Persons are hearing us down in Four Seasons as well. So it's good to be here at the base, at the bottom of Craddock Road. I am told and I heard earlier this evening that this is a historical venue or historical location a lot of politicians of the past would have come right here at the base some may have started a political career right here and some would have done some things right here to propel them forward well i want to say we are at the base tonight in support of keith this and that scarborough so we are hoping that our our stop here tonight is one which will propel him forward into this upcoming election on the 5th of March. And when I say propel him forward, I mean propel him forward right into government. Because we're not just campaigning just to make noise. We're not just campaigning because a seat has been made available. Yes, a seat has been made available, but we are campaigning to get Kid this and that Scarborough elected as the newest member of parliament and the newest member in the cabinet of the Nevis Island administration. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here tonight and we have been campaigning long and hard for the last two weeks. We have gone to Cotton Ground, we have gone to Bansgut, we have gone to Craddock Road, Upper Craddock Road, that is. We have also gone to, in recent days, we have gone where? Where was the last? In Jessup's. Not only talking on the microphone, but we have wrapped on doors all up and down cotton ground. We have wrapped on doors up in Bansgut. We have gone in Craddock Road. We have gone all up and down St. Thomas Parish. We have carried a message. And a simple message, and that is to vote for Keith, this and that Scarborough. Vote for Keith, this and that Scarborough, so he can be your next representative, not just in Parliament, but also in the cabinet of the Nevis Island administration. 
That has been a simple message, but it has been a powerful message. In that we have said to you, and the examples are there to show, that when someone sits in parliament on the opposition bench, there's hardly much they can do for you other than to speak, to talk. And some people seem to be offended by this particular stance that we have taken. I want to say to you that last December, when the Honorable Mark Brantley, the Premier of Nevis, presented the budget for fiscal year 2019-2020, he spoke for well over two hours. Normally the response should come from the opposition for equal amount of time. Obviously there was no one on the opposition bench to respond. So when you think that someone should be there advocating on your behalf, no one was there. We had a sitting earlier this year, no one was there. Now do you want to tell me the people of St. Thomas's and the people on the other side feel satisfied not having somebody to advocate on your behalf? Now you will say, yes, someone should have been there. Joseph Parrish should have been there. There's a reason why he hasn't come for the last couple of sittings because he himself understands that he's not making, or he was not making an headway on the opposition benches. And that is why he didn't come. That is why we continue to preach to you here tonight. And we are preaching to the entire St. Thomas Parish. We are at the crossroad right now where we are transitioning from one era to the next. We don't want to be in an, in, in an era where persons come in on the opposition bench, talk for a period of time, run out the house, do not sit to contribute, or do not come to contribute. That is a waste of a vote and a waste of a representative. That is why we are saying that Keith, this and that Scarborough represent a transition for you in St. Thomas's. A transition to a new era when you'll have someone in parliament, in cabinet, advocating on your behalf. I don't think I can put it any simpler than that. And this is a transition from an era where you had opposition for the last well, it's not the last 22 years, but out of the last 28 years of Joseph Parry representing the people of St. Thomas's, he was on the opposition bench for 22 long years of those 28 years. So you missed out for 22 years. I've said before to you that when he was in the Nevis Island administration, he would have done some things in St. Thomas's. He didn't do it from the opposition benches. As soon as he came into government in 2006, he did a few things over there in St. Thomas's. I give him credit. I give him credit. But from the time he was out, he hardly came to parliament. He hardly did anything because he couldn't. And that is why the opportunity has now come to transition from what once was to what will be. And what will be is that come March 5th, Keith this and that Scarborough will be your next representative there for the St. Thomas Parish. And you'll get things done because he came here tonight. He has been doing it for the last two weeks. And not only that, for the last four elections, he has been articulating what he wants to get accomplished for the people of St. Thomas's. And you have to give him a chance. The way he gets things done is to, or the way someone gets things done is to give them a chance. So he has come and he has articulated what, to you what he'll do at the Cotton Room Play Field, what he'll do with the sporting clubs in St. Thomas's. He has articulated where he's going to place important names on various structures in St. Thomas Parish. These are good things. This is a man who is looking forward. A man who has the people of St. Thomas's parish at heart. I do not think he's going to come and say these things. And I, Alexis Jeffers, sitting in cabinet with him, would allow him to get away with it. It would never happen. Because the same love and affection that he has for St. Thomas Parish, the premier Navis, Mark Brantley, has that. Eric Evelyn has that. He has been walking over there. Spencer Brown has that love. I have that love. And keep this and that bringing more love on top of all that love. 
more love on top of it. Because the people in the NRP are suggesting, why do you have to be in cabinet to get things done? No, they're campaigning and of course they must campaign. But that is a foolish stance to take. I believe the NRP should sit out this one and say, Lord of mercy, with three more years, let's see what Keith this and that Scarborough can do. I think they should sit it out. Because I have said to you before that the NRP has been around for nigh 50 years. And most of us in this party who have hit 50 years, we are full of vim, vigor, and vitality. We strong look a bull. Strong look a lion. But a party like the NRP that has been around that long with a lot of stalwarts of the past. Ivor Steven, Sim, Simeon Daniel. I want to say Babin, but no, Ural Swanston, sorry, let me be respectful. All of those stalwarts, when they look back at what they see now, with the crop of people who they see running that party, they must be disappointed who are alive and those who are in the grave must be turning in the grave. Because of what NRP have capitulated to. It is a dying party. And anyone in St. Thomas who ought to jump up behind a dying party, I say go ahead. Because there's nothing to jump up to. We are offering you a solution. We are offering you an alternative in this party. Come with a vibrant party. Come with the blue party. Come with the party that is, that is doing things for you in this island. We have proven that we have the best interests of the people of Nevis at heart. Why do you think we wear these shirts every night saying people matter most? Because we have been looking after every man, woman and boy and girl in this country. We have done so. And even though we are saying to send kid this and that to cabinet and we'll have five representatives in all five parishes, all that would mean is that every parish will get equal attention. Every parish will have a representative to look out for your best interest in St. James, St. Thomas's, St. John's, St. Paul's, St. Thomas, did I call it before all five? You all know all the five parishes are. Huh? You'll have your representative sitting around that table. I call the cabinet room, the boardroom, where matters are discussed, where issues are trashed out, plans and programs and policies are tabled for the betterment of every single parish here on the island of Nevis. So Keith DeSandra Scarborough will join us and he will fight for the people of St. Thomas's. And there's nothing wrong with having five elected representative representing each parish. I will say to you, when I sit in cabinet and I hear what is available in terms of jobs, scholarships, monies, everything, I start thinking about St. James. And nobody could knock me for that because the people of St. James voted for me. And when they voted for Alexis Jeffers, they said, go to work. Go to work for us. They didn't say go to work for the island first, you know. They said work for us in St. James. And ultimately the work would be done for the island of Nevis. And that is what they sent me to do. So we are making the case to you. That when you send this and that to work. He's going to go to work first and foremost for the people of St. Thomas's, And by extension for the people of Nevis. So all five is what we are looking for. Strengthen our hands to make sure that you there in St. Thomas's, You also will be getting equal attention. You will be get, getting the deserved attention that you need. Opposition, what do you want to go back there for? People of St. Thomas's. You have been in opposition for many, many years. What do you want to go back there for? Look at this as a transition from what once was, I said before. Now this is a transition into good things to come. I want to say to you ladies and gentlemen that this election is about keep this and that Scarborough being elected. Yes. It is also an election where you're comparing the CCM versus the NRP or what is left of the NRP. You're comparing a CCM party in government, what they have accomplished over the years as against NRP, whatever they have done when they were there. We have been talking about some of the things that we have had to correct as a government. We have talking about some of the mess that we, have done, we would have met. We are talking about some of the things that we have had to erase in this country because of the ills that were brought on the people of this country. Or this island, sorry. And when we talk about these things, we talk with passion, you know. 
Because I can say to you, if I were to go back to as far as 2006, when the CCM left government, Nevis was a pristine, well-run and well-oiled machine. A well-run island. And the records were there to show in finances, in the social development of the island of Nevis, in every possible sector here on the island. Nevis was a well-run island. All areas, statutory bodies, and all departments of government was being run well. People were happy. People had disposable income. People were working, making a good living in this island. Over the period of time, 2006 to 2013, something went wrong in Nevis. Last Friday, you heard the premier speak about a case that we would have won last Thursday. I didn't go into that because, you know, I'm not a lawyer. Premier Blunt is a lawyer. He should know what to say, when to say what. So what I'm going to do, I said to this, this to Premier Brantley, I am going to win the cases. I am going to give you the results of those cases and then you would know how to address them publicly. Because you are the man. You are the voice of the party that would tell them, play, now we go. All I do is go to court. They take me court every day, you know. Every single day, look like I in the courthouse. Every day, every week, every month. Something got to be wrong with my name. Well, if it is good, well, let me go along a quote and represent the people of Nevis then. Let me go and represent because every time they take me there, we are coming back with a victory. Because what they did in this island between 2006 and 2013, they must be punished someday. And they will be punished. Let me say to the people of Nevis and the entire world that is listening, we have already written to this gentleman that the premier spoke about. I don't call nobody's name because I get fed up a quote. But all I know who I'm talking about. Some smart fella who feel like he could have ripped off the corporation. But we have already written to him and given him one week to pay up those monies. Or make arrangement to pay them up. I know you ain't going to come up with the money, you know, but we're going to get the government money one way or the other. Not the government money. The people of Nevis money one way or the other. So we're going to go ahead and pursue that. And when the money is available and paid to us, we're going to let the people of Nevis know. But you see, what is so wrong with what went on is this. You see that NHL, they say, that place they had in money. Money can't done up to 2006. And I'm putting it there, the, the, the bluntest way I can put it if there's such a word. I'm being blunt about it. He had monies. Finances were there. But I'll tell you all something, you know. You know, in any institution, when, when the top of teeth, the middle gun teeth, because they said the top of teeth, when the middle of teeth, the bottom gun said they're going to teeth, because the middle and the top of teeth. All of them were taking what is not theirs. So nobody could have called back nobody up there and said, you're doing something wrong. So all of them had their hand in the cookie jar, taking more than they should take. Taking the people of Navy's resources and making and enriching themselves. So now they get caught. They get caught. And once you get caught, there are consequences to your action. And that is why I'm saying to you tonight, without going into too much details, I am going to ensure that the people's monies are returned to the people of Nevis. That's an institution that was built for the people of Nevis to work on behalf of the people of Nevis. Can you imagine when we told you about the $71 million that was re realized for those lands up there at Nugent Heights and down there at Pinnies? 71 plus million dollars. Can you imagine the amount of young men and young women in this island who could have benefited from a, an affordable income house? You could almost bill it for them and tell them come to the corporation and pay. But yet still when you make all that money, you meet all that money, you still went and borrow more to build more houses. So where the money really gone? Where the money really gone? Over 71 million dollars and they still went to the social security board to borrow more money. Could you imagine that? No, when you look at these things and you question these things, they start to question you and start to criticize you as a decent human being in this island. We in this administration have questioned it and they have said all manner of evil about us. But that is how they operate. That is how they operate. 
But now that they've shown you clearly who they are. Now that they've shown you clearly who they are, you the people in St. Thomas's, the people of Nevis, you must leave them exactly where they are. Leave them outside the door of parliament. I only say leave them in opposition. Because if you say opposition, maybe someone might come in there. I don't want to see not one of them inside there. Not one of them. So leave them exactly where they are. Because when people do wrong, like I say, they must be punished. And here's the interesting thing. After 40 plus years, not one soul going to be in parliament as the leader of the NRP. After 40 plus years, not one soul is capable of being there as the leader of NRP. That must say something to you as a people in St. Thomas says. That's why I said to you, NRP is a dying party. There's no reason to resuscitate it. Do not go out in St. Thomas says to vote for the NRP or anybody who's representing the NRP because any vote for the NRP is to leave them right where they are. They're not coming back into parliament because I know for sure Keith, this and that Scarborough will be winning that seed come the 5th of March. And I want to say congratulations to Keith in advance. But let me say to Keith, it is not going to be an easy last two or three days. I want you to go out and knock on every door. Go out and make sure that you ask every single person in St. Thomas's for a vote. You know why? People in St. Thomas's would love to engage you. Would love to engage all of us. So all of us in this great party has to carry the fight to St. Thomas's. Go out and beat the pavement. Ask every single person out there for a vote. Because they themselves understand that they need proper representation. And proper representation will start on the 5th of March. So we are encouraged by what we have seen thus far. We are encouraged by the responses that we have had from the good people of St. Thomas's, And I do believe that is going to translate into something good for all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not here this evening to talk long. We can talk long and we can talk hard. But we came with a simple message and we are going to leave with that same simple message. And it has been the same for the last couple of weeks. What we are saying to you is that we are putting forward a gentleman who have been there throughout the years. Contributing to the betterment of the island of Nevis. He has contributed in, in culture. He has been in, in the Calypso arena for over 40 years. He has done a marvelous job representing Nevis locally, regionally, and internationally. He has also served as the president of the Nevis Cricket Association. And I'd like to put a little note there and say there was no confusion like what you had a couple of weeks ago. When a certain gentleman from the other side, because he wanted to be in something, it created all kind of confusion just to get to the presidency. This and that Scarborough was elected without any fuss or any confusion as the president of the Nevis Cricket Association. What he did then, the records are there to show he did a marvelous job as the president of the Nevis Cricket Association. Not only that, Kate Desson at Scarborough has been in and around the community contributing. And as such, I want to say to you that he has been there. He has been among you. He has been there with you. And he's saying he wants to represent you. So I beg you, I beseech you, I urge you to give him the chance. Give a man a chance. Give him the chance. And with that chance, he'll be able to fulfill all that he has committed to fulfill for you, the good people of St. Thomas's. So I want to say in leaving, we have two more days. Tuesday and Wednesday to campaign and then Thursday is business. Business on Thursday where we go down into St. Thomas's and get out all the votes. I want to say all those persons over in St. Thomas's, go to vote early. If you work in Charlestown, go to vote before you come to work. The reason why I'm saying that legally, you have that right to vote and you can stand over there, make your X for however long then you go to vote. The bottom line is getting your vote made before you go to work. Do not procrastinate. Do not wait until later. 
I want to make sure that by the time we get to 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and we do the tally, we can say we have had all of our people who would have gone in to vote, and that would give us a signal that this and that is on its way to victory. And as such, this great party will join with this and that Thursday night and celebrate with him a grand victory. History will be made on the 5th of March because you know what? For the first time, there's no Sim Daniel. There's no Joseph Parry. It will be Keith this and that Scarborough. For the first time ever, the CCM party being led by the Honorable Mark Brantley can safely say they have won a seat in the St. Thomas Parish, and that would be a wonderful thing. Vote for Keith this and that Scarborough, right here in Lower Craddock Road, Upper Craddock Road, Jessup's, Cotton Ground, Bansgott, Westbury, the whole of St. Thomas's. Go on out Thursday and vote for Keith this and that Scarborough. Vote for the Hammer. Vote for the Blue Team. Vote for CCM, which represent the best for the island of Nevis, where we say in this party, people matter most. And that's the message I want to bring to the good people of St. Thomas Parish. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful night and let's celebrate come Thursday, the 5th of March. Thank you very much, Honorable Alexis Jeffers. And we want to keep that momentum going. I think he had up a lot of steam. We don't want to lose that momentum. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to announce that our next meeting tomorrow is going to be in Jessup's. Right next to the community center in Jessup's. So tomorrow evening we are going to be in Jessup's. And then on Wednesday evening to bring the curtain down. We are going to be at Market Shop in Cotton Ground. So ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow in Jessup's. Wednesday night in Cotton Ground at Market Shop. We are keeping the momentum going. And we are going to be electing Keith King this and that Scarborough. In St. Thomas's, come Thursday. Ladies and gentlemen, we are moving on with the meeting. And we have one more speaker for you tonight. And this speaker is the leader of the Concerned Citizens Movement. And come Friday morning, he's still going to be the Premier of Nevis. And what I want you to do is to send Keith Scarborough on Friday morning to make sure that he have one more person with him to help him to run the island. He already doing a good job. And I believe that if Keith Scarborough comes along, it's going to make the job so much easier for all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the mic, the Premier of Nevis, the Honorable Mark Bradley. Can never be friends, oh no, oh no. Here I come with love and not hatred. Show me goodness and mercy shall follow I all the days of my life. Yet be no one, no wish to be with no evil man. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to be here in Craddock Road at the base. I feel that we've come home because this used to be many years ago where all the political parties met. This used to be where the political action was. And we have come back now in 2020. Good evening to Mama Lou and Zumbai. Good evening to all the people here, to our Spanish community. Buenas noches. Buenas noches, mi amigos, dominicanos. I'm happy 
to be here and happy to see you and happy to hear you and happy to have you with us. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very simple message. We have a very simple task on Thursday. And on Thursday, we the people of St. Thomas's Parish must make a decision. And that decision is a rather simple decision. Do you elect someone and send them to opposition? Or do you elect someone and send them to government? That's the simple proposition. It doesn't require any long talking. It doesn't require us to go through all kinds of iterations. There is a very simple equation at work come Thursday. What do the people of St. Thomas's want in their representative? Do you want someone to go in opposition? Or do you want someone to go in government? Because it seems to me that the other side is trying to confuse the people of St. Thomas's. It seems to me that they are suggesting that somehow if they are successful on Thursday, the government going to change. I listened to the candidate for the NRP laying out all kinds of plans and programs that she will put in place if she is elected. And I ask one simple question, how? How? One word, powerful word, how? Because to implement anything in St. Thomas's, by way of a governmental program, anybody in opposition is going to come and have to speak to who? The government? They're going to have to come and talk to me, the premier? They'll have to come and talk to my colleagues who are in cabinet? And whatever proposal they have must come to us because whatever happens on Thursday, we will still be the government come Friday. And that is why we are saying to the people of St. Thomas's, all the people in Craddockwood, all the people in Low Street and, and Jessops and Barnsgut, the people of Cotton Ground and the people of Westbury, and all the areas in between, we are saying to you that on Thursday, vote CCM. Votar CCM Azul, solamente Azul, come Thursday. That is what we want. We are voting for the blue on Thursday, the hammer. Because on Thursday we understand that we have a golden opportunity here in the parish of St. Thomas's. Now the rest of Nevis, ladies and gentlemen, has consistently voted CCM. So when you come up by me in St. John's, CCM. St. Paul's, CCM. St. George, CCM. St. James, CCM. And so we are saying to the people of St. Thomas's, join with the rest of us. Join with the rest of Nevis and send your representative to government. I told someone today that Keith Scarborough is the man for the time. He has demonstrated throughout his life a level of commitment. You just have to look at him in the Calypso arena. He is the only Calypso that we know of, not only in Nevis, but in the entire region, who since he entered the arena has competed every single year. Every single year. Some people, you know, when they win, they keep coming back. But the first time they lose, they blame the judges, they blame everybody, and they decide they're not coming back. But King Dissanat win, lose, or draw. He comes year after year after year after year. And that tells me something about the man. It tells me that he has commitment. And ladies and gentlemen, commitment is an essential characteristic if you are to lead. Commitment is an essential characteristic if you are to serve people. Because you have to love what you do. You have to be committed to it. Because oftentimes I tell you. It is not easy. And he has demonstrated a commitment. A stick to itiveness. And that is why I am saying. That this is the man. For the moment. This is the man. Who on Thursday is going to make history. This afternoon. 
So members of the CCM team did a walkthrough in an area called Cahoons. Alexis Jeffers fixed up the place so nice. They call it Cahoon Manor. Beautiful homes, beautiful roads, beautiful lighting. And what I love about it, all the infrastructure is underground. So you don't see any, any poles, you don't see any electricity lines running, everything underground. Beautifully done. And as we walk through the thing that impressed me is how the people responded to us. How the people responded to us. There was a level of positivity because people understood the message. And that message is that they're better off with a representative in government. They're better off with someone sitting around the cabinet table. So when the other members come to agitate for their constituents and their constituency, the people of St. Thomas's will equally have a man at the table saying, here I am, standing up for Crater Code. Here I am, standing up for Jessops and Barnsgrove and Cotton Ground. Here I am, standing up for Westbury. I am standing up for the people of St. Thomas's. And that man, ladies and gentlemen, is Keith Dissonat Scarborough. I am telling you that I have a feeling I am not a soothsayer. I can't tell the future. I'm not a fortune teller. I'm not a prophet. But I have a feeling that on Thursday, the people of St. Thomas's are going to vote for CCM. I have a feeling that on Thursday, the people of St. Thomas's are going to bring home the seat and create history here in our little island. Now I hear them up and down saying that to get five seats is undemocratic. They say that CCM wants to get all the seats and that is undemocratic. I'm here to say to you tonight that that is nonsense. In Grenada, Keith Mitchell and his team have all 15. In Barbados, Mia Motley and her team have all 30. I have not heard anybody there say that it is undemocratic. Because in those countries, the countries are running well. You know why? Because every constituency has a voice. Every constituency is at the table. And that, ladies and gentlemen, gives us an opportunity. It gives us an opportunity to ensure that nobody's voice is left out. And the people of St. Thomas's Parish, all the people of this great parish have a right. They have a right to be heard in the cabinet, not just in the parliament. And the NRP is asking you to just send somebody to Parliament to make noise. I'm saying while that is useful and that is important, it is equally important to send somebody to the Cabinet and to the government. That is a choice. This is not a general election. This is not the time where there is any opportunity to change the government. And so to my mind, the choice is so clear, the choice is so easy. And I will tell you, you know, as much as the NRP is saying that St. Thomas's is an RP country, I can tell you that they're nervous. I can tell you that they're nervous and that they sense what we are sensing, that there's a wind of change blowing through St. Thomas's. They're coming out in their numbers. They're coming out. They have launch after launch after launch of the one candidate. This launch failed, they bring another launch. The other day, I understand they had something in cotton ground, and all the labor bigwigs from Sinkets came over. What are they doing over here? What have they come for? Because the reality is that they recognize that St. Thomas's of old is no longer the St. Thomas's today. The St. Thomas's of old that felt that NRP bedrock foundation was in that parish. That is no longer the St. Thomas's of today. So Simeon Daniel, God bless his soul. He has contributed, but he has departed this life. Joseph Parry has made his contribution. He has said enough is enough, and he has left. The question that I ask you is the person that who is now coming, what contribution has that person made? What? You know, I was on Facebook. You know, I like to go on Facebook. And some NRP supporter, you know what they say? They say the woman is an intellectual, and this and that is only a Calypsonian. 
And I said, what is that supposed to mean? Because this and that has contributed for over 30 years in the Calypso arena. So because I go to school and pass some exam, I am better than a man who has contributed all these years, who has now been recognized with an MBE as a cultural icon in this country. And I say that's the difference you know, between an RP and CCM. Because in this great party in CCM, we see the worst in all of our people. So I'm saying that this young woman is an intellectual. And this and that is only a Calypso. And I ask, what does that mean? What does that mean? Because I can tell you that King, this and that, Keith Scarborough has contributed. Whether it's in Calypso, whether it's in culture, whether it is in cricket, whether the work that he did when he went there and took NTV and transformed it into what we enjoy today. The man has paid his dues and he has contributed in this country. And I will not join with anybody in disrespecting any of our people or seeking to belittle their contribution to this country. Because some people, you're only hearing their name now since you hear them in politics. You never hear them involved in nothing yet. You never hear them make a contribution to nothing yet. You never hear them involved in a little club. Matter of fact, I'm told that as they've been walking through cotton ground, that they're saying, oh, let me introduce you to the candidate. The candidate don't know cotton ground people, and cotton ground people don't know the candidate. And that is the reality. When people are calling the name, everybody's saying, who? 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 Who that? Nobody knows. And I ask you, therefore, to reward those who have contributed and who have had a lifetime of service to the people of Nevis. All of us can't be doctors, you know. All of us can't be lawyers. All of us can't be accountants and engineers. Some of us must be masons. Some must be carpenter. Some must be fishermen. Some of us, some of us, must ensure that our people are taken care of up at the flamboyant home. Some of us must be Calypsonians. Some of us must be dancers and singers. You know what is most important? That each and every one of us must make our contribution. And every contribution counts. And every contribution helps to build our country. So when they come with their forwardness, talking about our candidate being a Calypsonian, they must know their place. They must know their place and understand that we are sending to the people of St. Thomas's an excellent candidate. A man who has demonstrated the vim, vigor, vitality, the stick to itiveness, the determination, the commitment that requires and that leadership requires. That is the man that we are sending. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying to you that this is a great opportunity. You know, as I look around, and I looked throughout this constituency. Somebody said, oh, CCM has not done anything to help the people of St. Thomas's. I said, really? Really? What absolute rubbish. Look at the record. You see, as the Premier of Nevis, leading a team, a good team, an excellent team, an untainted team. You never hear nobody in my CCM team, in my cabinet, Take no land for the brother and the wife and the sister and the cousin. You never hear them building a house for the grandpa and the papa. We don't engage in that. You never hear them buy no land from the boy who pretending to be father. We don't engage in that. When we sit, we are thinking about the people of Nevis. That is what we are supposed to do. There was a time here, and for my friends and family, from the Dominican Republic. My friends and family from the Dominican Republic. Those. There's a time. Ladies and gentlemen. When you couldn't sleep comfortably. In your homes at night. The NRP. When they were in office. You used to have immigration. And police. Kicking down your door. Every day. Every night. You know. Just. Yesterday, I got a call from a lady. You know what she said? She said, Mark Brantley, there is a rumor 
that you have a plane coming in from Santo Domingo with 29 people. I said, what is that about? He said, oh, they got coronavirus in Santo Domingo. You shouldn't let the people come in here. Imagine that. Our own brothers and sisters from the Dominican Republic. Many people, ladies and gentlemen. Many people forget. You see me? I try never to forget. But many people forget that when things were hard in Nevis, when things were difficult in Nevis, our grandfathers went to Dominican Republic to cut sugar cane. They went there to make a life for themselves. And that little money that came back helped to support people who are back here. We sometimes forget that our people went to St. Martin and to the U.S. Virgin Islands and to the British Virgin Islands. You go to a place like St. Thomas, you go to Tortola, you got a ton load of divisions down there. You go up to the United States of America, you got the Leeds and those places, ton load of Americans, of divisions, I'm sorry, in those places. And so, when I hear the people of Nevis, who start to promote this type of agenda against our brothers and sisters from the Caribbean, whose roots are right here, that is where their family comes from, their grandfather, so abuelo, from here, grandmother, so abuela, from here. And then when I hear this chatter, and I said, look at what we are trying to do. I am saying that is not the CCM. The CCM welcomes our brothers and sisters, welcomes our family, and we say, come and help us build Nevis. All we ask is that when you come, you obey our laws. That's all we ask. When you come, you obey our laws and you help us to build our country, just as we have gone to other countries and helped to build them. That is the reality. When I hear about San Pedro de Macorís, San Pedro de Macorís, pure Nevis people down there. Pure Nevis people down there. And we must welcome them because just as we went there to San Pedro de Macorís, they have come home now to us. We are one. They are us and we are them. So we must start in this island and in this country to recognize our contribution to them and their contribution to us. One family. How do you say? Una familia. One family. That is what it is. I'm going to try to stop speaking Spanish now because I've run out of words. But I'm trying to say that it is very important that we recognize that our friends and family from places like San Pedro de Macorís is una familia. Una familia. And that is why on Thursday, whoever's, whoever's, one decision and one decision only, we say azul, 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 solamente azul. That is what we are saying. And for those of you who not comprend it, I'm saying blue, blue, only blue. That is where we are going. I wish Enzi would stop and come and talk some Spanish for me. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you. You see where you're in Cradock Road? As we drove down this road, I reflected that on my last birthday, I was 51 years old. And in my 51 years, I have never known any major work done on Craddock Road. I have not. If I'm wrong, then somebody from Craddock Road will correct me. But here comes the CCM. Here comes the Honorable Spencer Brand. Working with a CCM team, let me remind the people of Craddock Road that half is St. Paul's and half is St. Thomas's. When we put that road, it benefits both parishes. And that road, ladies and gentlemen, a brand new spanking road delivered to the people of St. Thomas's by the Council Citizens Movement. I want, when you're going Jessup's, when you're going up Jessup's Road, make a right where my friend dearly departed, Michel Letang, had his car wash. And go around. 
And you go up those roads put in by the CCM. Look at the house in development in Jessup's. Those roads put in by the CCM. You go up and you go around, you go to Cohoon's estate. Beautiful infrastructure put in by the CCM. You look at the land in Cohoon's. Just today we had to explain to some of the landowners. That while the NRP acquired the lands, it was CCM that paid for them. You come down the road, you see the beautiful island main road that we are now refurbishing. Of all the places it could have started, we said no, we will start it in cotton ground. You look at the parish of St. Thomas is now, my good friend Ika is here making noise as usual. But Ika have a big bank up there in Barnes got now. Cotton ground, at the foot of cotton ground, you have another big bank over there now. Oh, yeah. Pretty soon, we're going to have to change the name to Wall Street because it's pure banks now in St. Thomas's Parish. Oh, yeah, yeah. When we go into Cahoons today, oh, yeah. a young man was there. He has on his shirt, the shirt said Paradise Beach Resort. Oh, yeah. And I said to him how proud I was that it is a CCM government that reopened Paradise Beach Resort. And I asked him there, how many people are over there working? He said, Almost 60. Almost 60 people working at Paradise Beach Resort. Courtesy of the work of this concerned citizens movement. So you see them? You see them? I'm telling you ladies and gentlemen. That comes Thursday. Thursday. Don't worry. They will keep driving because months. He's giving away everything that he hopes to get. And that to me, ladies and gentlemen, speaks volume.